Let's talk about oceans. We've all been trapped in a throwaway society for the past 50 years. The days of owning a product for a lifetime and possibly passing it on to your children are long gone. The majority of what we use now is thrown away due to the rise of throwaway plastics. Every piece of plastic you've ever thrown away is still out there, and the ocean has the bulk of it. Welcome back to our channel, Circle of the Earth, where we explore everything about reforestation, desertification, and greening projects. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch is floating between Hawaii and California. It is estimated to be 1.6 million square kilometers in size, or almost three times the size of France. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch is home to a considerable accumulation of floating trash, much of which is spread out over a large area. Not only plastic bottles and lost goggles can be found here, it is actually a scattering of microscopic plastic fragments floating in seawater. Around 14 million tons of plastic enter the oceans each year, making up around 80% of the marine trash, according to the November 2021 report. We are all becoming more conscious of the issue and the enormous plastic gyre floating in the Pacific Ocean. In actuality, plastic pollution causes 100,000 marine species and more than 1 million seabirds to die every year. It's terrifying to know there will be more plastic than fish in the oceans by 2050 if nothing happens. It's clear. Something has to change. Scientists have struggled for years to figure out how to stop the flow of waste into the area or how to remove the growing ocean trash problem. The solution now lies in a charity group called the Ocean Cleanup. They recently achieved a major victory when they were able to remove an incredible 20,000 pounds of plastic rubbish from the Pacific Ocean. How precisely did they accomplish this? What additional steps is the ocean cleanup taking to address the threat posed by the Great Pacific Garbage Patch? Let's find out, shall we? This is Boyan Slat, a Dutch inventor and CEO of the Ocean Cleanup. He is showing his belief to the world with his unwavering commitment to cleaning the oceans. His objective is to remove 90% of the plastic pollution in the ocean and 80% of the riverine waste from the world's 1,000 rivers. Boyan Slat was only 18 when he started the Ocean Cleanup in 2013. His high school research on ocean plastic pollution looked at why it was thought to be impossible to clean up. Slat left his aerospace engineering program at TU Delft to focus on creating his concept. He presented his idea at a TEDx lecture, which has gone viral after being shared on numerous news websites immediately after he established the Ocean Cleanup in 2013. Their goal is to simply get rid of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Slat and his crew created the Wilson, or simply System 001, Ocean Cleanup System to reach this. The goal of Device 001 was to create an autonomous cleanup system that would be propelled by the ocean's current and catch floating plastic debris as it traveled. The concept was excellent. It implied that the cleanup system wouldn't need a crew team and could operate non-stop 24 hours per day, 7 days per week, clearing the rubbish patch as it went. However, System 001 had a design defect that made it ineffective. Nevertheless, the autonomous system performed admirably. System 001 traveled too slowly because its mobility depended on ocean currents. As a result, the suspended plastic debris was traveling quicker than the device and completely evading it. The ocean cleanup design team had to temporarily set aside the autonomous cleanup system in order to reconsider their design in order to fix the problem. This resulted in System 002, often known as Ginny, a nickname given to it in honor of Forrest Gump's character. System 002 is dragged through the garbage patch by two enormous ships, moving at a glacially sluggish one and a half knots, in contrast to System 001. A substantial net barrier that reaches about three meters below the ocean's surface is part of the cleanup system and is designed to trap plastic waste as it moves across the water. The retention zone, a collection region, is a feature of the barrier's design. As the rubbish is transported toward the retention zone by the ocean currents, it gets gathered here. The two ends of the barrier are attached to one of the vessels when the day's cleanup is finished, and the other vessel makes its way to the retention zone, where all of the debris from the cleanup is gathered. The waste is first sorted by the crew here, and then it is sent ashore to be processed into plastic pellets. And one of the most fascinating aspects of ocean cleanup is this. These plastic pellets can be sold to businesses that produce items, who then use the recycled plastic to create new products. Boyan Slat collaborated with renowned Italian eyewear designer Sophie Lowe and California designer Garvey's Baker to produce the Ocean Cleanup's high-end sunglasses as proof that the idea is effective. The sunglasses frames were made from recycled plastic that System 1 had gathered, and the money from their sale was utilized to raise money for additional cleanups. 
However, the design and success of the sunglasses showed that there was hope for the future. Investors have made it plain that the ocean cleanup won't be focusing on manufacturing products from the recycled rubbish removed from the garbage patch. They claim they can produce high-grade goods from recycled plastic recovered from the garbage patch. The sunglasses, he said, were just a proof of concept that valuable goods may be created from this plastic waste. To give options to businesses that could be interested in purchasing pellets of plastic from the nonprofit group, the Ocean Cleanup team will continue to investigate and create various methods of turning ocean plastic garbage into high-quality items. The Ocean Cleanup is aiming to perfect its cleanup technology after System 002's success by launching System 3, which will serve as a model for future cleanup systems. To significantly reduce the massive amount of rubbish floating in the garbage patch, Slat and his colleagues intend to deploy 10 cleanup systems every five years. The ocean cleanup team is now only making small steps considering how much debris is there in the garbage patch. Before all the debris in the garbage patch is removed, according to Slat, the team may need to do more than 3,000 cleanups. But in order to fully clear the garbage patch, it is necessary to stop the flow of waste, which will require cleaning up the rivers where this plastic debris is dumped before it enters the ocean. Water moves plastic waste from streets into creeks and rivers, which then transport all of the waste into the ocean. Additionally, we need to adjust how we behave toward recycling plastic products and educate people on proper waste disposal techniques. Yes, much more than what ocean cleanup can provide will need to be done collectively. However, the Foundation is making every effort to inform people about the necessity to use climate-saving plastic disposal techniques. Nevertheless, the ocean cleaning still has to make certain technological improvements to use System 2, for example. The cleanup method has an environmental cost because the team must burn fossil fuels. For now, at least going forward, Slat and his crew are experimenting with low-carbon emission fuels for their support vessels in an effort to become carbon neutral for the time being. In only nine years, it has been a wonderful adventure, and much more are to come. What do you think, though? Is this effort to clean up plastic one that will go down in the history books? Or have we condemned our ocean to exist as a plastic soup for millennia? Tell us in the comments section below. If you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified on every new video from our channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.